today we're going to attempt to talk about... How do you say We it? didn't know how to pronounce her name. Um, how do you pronounce her name? It's not like Shamima Puddle Duck. Shamima Begum. Shamima Begum. But uh, it is. Shamima. What's she mad? Who is that woman who went to join ISIS? And she was... Um, and now Shamima she's... Begum. Okay. Who's ISIS. bringing home the Begum? <laughs> Begum! Not, not Sajid Javid. <laughs> Shamima Begum! <laughs> That's the tone in which the public are speaking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is she a victim? Is she a terrorist? Who Does cares? it really matter? Does it matter? <laughs> Shamima Begum! Was um, one of three teenage girls uh, who were from Bethnal Green. They uh, left to join good old yes, ISIS. queen. Lied to their parents. Uh -huh. Took a plane, yes, they were like, queen. Mom, I don't have to listen to you. I only have to listen to terrorists. Miss, I'm going to my friend's house. <laughs> <laughs> then she went to Syria. Then she went to Syria. Her friend was Syria. Yeah. Her friend was <laughs> ISIS. <laughs> she got radicalised at home. Radicalized. Just online. I got yeah. radicalised by Green Day. Yeah. <laughs> so all Shamima was trying to do was just stick it to the man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's quite delightfully remorseless and mm. like quite rude. Maybe she's not in a position where she can like denounce. That's a good point actually, MC. That's mm. a very good point. She can't denounce Daesh. Yeah, she's like, no, I really like them still. Because they're like in the corner of the room. Yeah, she's like, head. yeah, they're like, because the interview's like, would you um, say that you're sorry for leaving and joining mm. these people? And she's like, no. Do you miss Doctor Who? <laughs> That's what you had a Jack said. He was like, I want to come back to the UK because I've missed past you. Jack, 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 Jack. Jackie Jason. All of the different. Jackie Jacob. All of the biblical names. Jackie Jesus. Look, is it a crime to be thick? No. Go find me in the Constitution where it says one could be stripped of their British citizenship for being thick. Thick as shit. Just the, especially, she's not just thick, thick as, as shit. shit. I see a lot of people on the left who are insistent on stressing uh, all the ways in which she was victimised. But I think it's a don't. I think that's dangerous territory. You're trying to suggest that only virtuous people are deserving mm. of, or remorseful people, or that citizenship is conditional on behaviour. You can draw a parallel with like the Windrush scandal as well. But everyone was sort of saying this community moved here and they built this country and all of the wonderful things that they did and how hard working they yeah. were which is all obviously true but it shouldn't be the basis on which we decide whether yeah. they should be deported or not so. yeah kind of like honorable um working immigrant, class yeah. yeah immigrant we shouldn't yeah. have to Justify necessarily be yeah. like a like a speckless human being before you get granted so it's just speckless. if you're not white white yes ah <laughs> that's you because i believe in the law you can only recant the citizenship of someone of you can't do that for non-immigrant citizens. You can't so quickly revoke someone's citizenship. Right. But so it makes it kind of an inherently racist uh, yeah. law. I feel like the British public just is always it's bulging with this like violent and like Islamophobic, misogynistic, racist tendency. And this kind of story just bursts all mm, of that. It's mm -hmm. all just come screaming out, like the level of like gleeful vitriol that everyone is kind of right and left all over the shop are just so happy that we've we've got this black and white moral situation almost that we kind of it's it's kind of mad watching the kind of media service. I mean, newspapers and are not fully reflective of like the population or whatever, but like I think it's like eighty five percent of Britons. Um, agree that her citizenship mm -hmm. should be revoked and she should never be let back in and maybe it's just grasping on to like a, a moral certainty yeah because no one knows i mean she's doing. like a pretty good example of somebody that you can direct all of that hatred towards because of her character yeah um she's a dickhead yeah she seems like the perfect example of someone who wants to get uh, all of britain's uh, benefits for herself without anything in return. You're offended so. by our flag, but not our benefits. Yeah, exactly. That whole like benefits grounding. Yeah. Uh, welfare state thing. She wants her kid not to die. Yeah. The bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, cause she is. She's so clearly. Do whether or not she's still 
coerced. I mean, she seems yeah. unrepentant, but also no one's engaging with why that might be. Yeah. The fact that she was groomed at age 15, which, like, is basically a child. Like, people pick and choose when 15 is old enough to right, get better yeah. and when it's a victim child. Like, if it's the, um, lol, if it's the, uh, if it's the young white girls in Rotherham, they're victims, and if it's, if it's Shabina Begum, Shabina Begum, then she's like a malicious terrorist who's just out to get. It. I don't think she could orchestrate. Well, well a terror as, attack. Well, what we, what we was know, like she lines. was just a housewife. Yeah, that's what um, she said. And you know, if they want to know, they can detain her at the airport and talk to her and get the actual information from her whereas now you if you love the law and you love the law and you want to enact it then mm. you can do that here yeah with her. do it dickhead um but now we've there's this this wo- woman i suppose who's raised in england um and radicalized england it's england's responsibility to like take care of what her punishment is um, the Bangladesh don't want her. Yeah, they've just been like, ah, you deal with it yeah. to Bangladesh because she's brown. When it, when it comes to her having dual citizenship, she's never lived in Bangladesh. She's never mm-hmm. gone there. I don't know if she's never gone there, but she's never. I think she's never been. No, she's never been. Um, as a second generation immigrant in the UK, she technically is able to uh, claim citizenship there. Mm. Being a child of Bangladeshi parents, she could do that because that's, that's up until that age works. 21, she um, can apply. Yeah. But Bangladesh had been like, uh-uh, we don't no. want your ass. Yeah. So it really calls into question, like, what Britishness is. And, yeah. you know, who does that... Who is that afforded to? Yeah. Um, also, yeah. it's illegal to render any citizen stateless. So you can you can only revoke citizenship if, they, if you have dual citizenship so they can go somewhere else. Now she has no rights, no yeah, constitutional backing, yeah. no, no country law that would uh, protect her from... Anything. anything. So she'll probably just die, I guess. <laughs> guess I'll die. I guess she would just die. Well, what's going to happen to her kid? She had two that died anyway. I mean, she's obviously experienced, like, huge trauma mm. being there. She was groomed online. She was lighting. What is going on? Like, these kind of, this particular kind of, like, reactionary Britishness that is, like, fed on a diet of, like, anti-Islam and this, like, ISIS terror... Um, shit with no context about why ISIS exists, why mm. the why the complications of the Middle East exist, the implications of British foreign policy. There's no knowledge or because there's no there's no media highlight on that. Yeah. So ISIS for so a lot of people thick. is this inexplicable yeah. terror that um, basically and the terror because it's inexplicable it becomes rooted in the religion. The religion is inherently evil. Therefore, the people who look like them are evil, and it basically becomes like a and people uh, like yeah, thing. and people um, like Shamina don't help. The the topic of beheadings was brought up, and she was like, "Oh well, I didn't have a problem with that because uh, according to Islam, that's fine." <laughs> yeah, and then that like, fuels for a lot yeah, of people's exactly. fire, isn't it? Yeah. About like Islam being like an inherently violent, violent religion, yeah. and like again, maybe she's thick. Yeah, but at the same time, like people who have this diet of like. British imperialism and a completely uncomplicated trust in the British, like, war establishment, they expect, um, if you're brown, you have to be brown with bare conditions. Yeah, you have to and be the perfect of brown. Yeah, and one, like we were saying about the good immigrant, but also one of them is just to be constantly sort of ingratiating yourself. You're accepted into, into society to an extent, but not if you're openly critical or aggressive or you're not supremely grateful for the for the um gifts that the british establishment has bestowed upon you bestowed bestowed yeah. bestowed upon you it supposedly proves all these people right that everyone there is like a remorseless evil villain who hates the the britain and it's no more complicated than that because that's probably what the ideology is like in yeah. Isis. but it's this frustrating thing like that this this muslim woman has done this horrible thing and she's not even sorry like the outrage about that like you should be you should shut the fuck up like you, it's you, like you, it's like yeah it's like maybe she should shut the fuck up and yeah maybe she should be ashamed and she all should these definitely things, shut like, the fuck up yeah she'd absolutely that. shut the fuck up and deal with the consequences yeah and you know whether that be the law i don't know you know yeah but um but citizenship, that's a very different thing. Like, the, people feel like they really have the right to strip that 
yeah. off somebody. Yeah. Because they think, well, she made that decision to go there and then therefore she loses any right, yeah. any claim yeah. to where anything. Did we, where did that come yeah, from? That speci- I think it's you because do, it's the um, only thing that we, that the British public feel like they have a say on, right? Yeah. Like, because it, it, it's identity and like association. Mm. Like, you know, we feel that we can denounce her and we can say that we don't want to be associated with her anymore because that Britishness is the only tie that we have. Yeah. So if we say that that can be removed, then maybe we have some kind of control. I think people also have like a sense of ownership over this land, yeah. you know? As if it hasn't always been a mixture of people coming here. Yeah, I think people so think that like, well, she left this land and she has been a, she's a traitor, mm. so therefore she doesn't have any right to come back here. Yeah, like the law isn't, the law it's is not how it works. not there to like kind of be amoral or exactly. at least emotional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In these situations, mm. like it's not, citizenship isn't based on if you're immoral but not criminal and the thing is she you could be a criminal, criminal and a citizen girl yeah you could be just a dickhead and still be a citizen yeah, yeah. you just be like an annoying person but not criminal she is she um going and going and joining isis is, is like a criminal activity but like she they can't just it's just a worrying trend that Saudi javed can start removing citizenship from mm. people willy-nilly um because they break the law. Sajid Javid just it bow kowtowing to like just this wave of popular support is so creepy for a politician to do. Because there's a wave of like media led outrage and then the government goes, Yeah, all right, we'll just we'll just revoke that, even though it's like illegal under international law. And yeah. even though she hasn't been tried, she hasn't been found guilty. We don't like we don't um, actually know what she did. Yeah, that's it's all it's all speculation at this point because all we know are the facts are that she left and she had kids and we don't know what happened, we don't know the circumstances under which yeah. she was radicalised, we don't know what was happening to her at home. We don't know what she did there. We yeah. don't know if she was yeah, here to yeah. feed information back. We don't know like we don't know. We, she also might provide important information about how radicalisation happens and yeah. who delivers the information, how the system actually works, like, you know, she could be... We don't know, that's what's yeah, weird, is yeah. this huge uh, legal move has been taken it's just without really, any... Yeah, yeah. it's just the public reaction as well. I think people seem to think that because if we allow her back into the UK, then we are condoning her actions or behaviour. Yeah. She not do PSC and citizenship. What does it mean to have to be a good citizen? Yeah. What else to say about this bitch? I don't know. Is it a crime to be thick? No. That is the question of the day. Um, and also, she just seems like a sullen kid, and that's not... It's just, it's not a trope that is digestible to people. Mm. And you can be like a passive... You know, like Nadia from the Bake Off. Like, loves Britain, but also mm. connects to her heritage. Like, really digestible Yeah, she wears Muslim. hijab. But, but she's, she's like bakes lovely cakes. Yeah, <laughs> it's like this beautiful kind of liberal fantasy, kind of of like multiculturalism. But Shamina is like a full on like unrepentant, mm, dude. Mm-hmm. and it really it, you can see how much it rages people when you're not. And like as Asian people, you kind of have to dance around all these tropes so that you're not yeah. treated in a specific way. I'm not saying it's the same because yeah. I didn't join ISIS, but <laughs> and jihadi is is has slightly different context because of his race, he's white, and also yeah. he has se- sort of seemingly expressed some kind of remorse and, I don't know, I'm not sure if the public have responded to him that differently. Do he allowed he's, to come back? He's still there? He's still there, but and he said, like, oh, I doubt that they will let me back, but... And he, and he also said that he, like, he misses Doctor Who and stuff. And oh, he misses all his, And he misses his mum. Not His parents if he knew it was our woman now. <laughs> yeah, that's what, what someone said. Uh, and all of his, uh, well, all of his parents, two, both of his parents, uh, <laughs> might face charges for um, funding terrorism because they sent him money. <laughs> that's just mums. That's just mums. Okay. <laughs> I'll bank transfer, bank transfer you. you. I'll great West. Have you got it? I was gonna say Great Western Union. I'm gonna wait <laughs> Western Union you. So you need some money. Some money. Some but fifteen pounds. For so that you can get some food, some terrorist food. <laughs> mm. Fox Sajid Javid. This is the Fox yeah, Sajid Javid. Such, yeah. 
And it does it does kind of make you wonder and worry as a, as a as a as a second gen immigrant. Mm. Like I've always I've never felt questioned in my Britishness, but now it's like have you not? No, I mean, like, I mean, yeah, but I mean, like, and not, not, and not in the sense of like, definitely being yeah, questioned, yeah. but I mean, like, uh, legally. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> like, I, I have, you know, only when I went to America, stuff, yeah. and they were like, "Where the fuck are you from?" You know, uh, when I was detained. Don't go to America if you're brown. I wouldn't say. Or I'm a sex worker. Yeah. Do they know that? Would they know? Okay. We'll talk about that later. Uh, that's all I think from us. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. That's it. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.